Uh, we are happy to start the second video in conversation with Mr. Fali Nariman. Uh, sir, my next question to you is, you are quoted to have said that law is a matter of heart as well as head. Would you like to kindly elaborate? Well, it's not, <coughs> yes, certainly. It's not merely law. Human beings are endowed with intellect such as each one has or does not have, as well as emotion, the heart. And very often, the heart governs the head. Very often, the heart governs the head. The feelings and emotions. The feelings and emotions. And you cannot resist that because it's a, it's a mixed thing. You can never say that this man is... a is a total intellectual and has no heart at all because then he is no man at all, quite frankly. A man has to have that mix yes. of heart and head. So a lawyer must also have a mix of heart and head. And a lawyer with a heart is a person who must be in a position to say, even if he is appearing for a particular case in a particular matter, when something is monstrously wrong, to defend it would be absurd. He should have the ability and the competence and the clarity to say, yes, my Lord, I think the other side is right. To admit failings in one's failings case. In one's case. Yes. <coughs> because no case is perfect. Yes. And this I learned yes. from... India's first Attorney General, Motilal Settlement, who was very kind to me when I came here in 72, after he had retired, long after he had retired. And I always found his argument, because he opposed me, I used to appear with him sometimes, he, sometimes he'd oppose me in the Supreme Court. He'd never give up a case. But if the judge would say that, but Sir Settlement, you have judged, what you say doesn't seem to be correct. He just stand there, himself put his hand in his pocket and say, that's all, my lord, that's all, that's all. Then you knew that he had no answer. <laughs> but then that's, that's the heart and head working together. That's the heart and head working together. It is very important. Those were very important days and you have said that that time there were only three law officers. Yes, three law officers. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And that, that's, uh, that always gives you a far better approach yes, to you. matters. Yes. Uh, moving on, sir, in, uh, you have also commented that uh, how to work the constitution is far more important than how to write it. Ah, this yeah. also requires some elaboration from you, right, sir. Right. Good. I, I will, uh, you, you told me this a few days ago. I remember, I remember, I remember. And I, I dotted it down. Okay. Sir. You see... There's a very nice quote from uh, okay. on the 50th anniversary of the Constitution Sorry. when President Narayanan was a very charming person and a very efficient uh, president, one of our best presidents uh, yes. that I thought was one of our best presidents. <coughs> and he said something very... Yeah, President Narayan's, K.R. Narayan's addressed on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Republic of India in the Central Hall of Parliament. The date is 27th January 2000. This is what he said. Today, when there is so much talk about revising the constitution yes. or even writing a new constitution, we have to consider whether it is the constitution that has failed us or whether it is we who have failed the constitution. Remember? Yeah. It's very aptly brought out. Yes. And then... No, no, the president went on. Dr. Rajendra Prasad, as president of the Constituent Assembly, had pointed out, if the people who are elected are capable of character and integrity, they should be able to make the best of a defective constitution. If they are lacking in that ability, the constitution cannot help the country. I this was Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Dr. Rajendra Prasad. And Narayanan said, if I believe these are wise words which we should always pay heed to. 
<laughs> I think coming from you now, those people who were not aware about uh, that 2000 remarks of President Narayanan, yes. they would appreciate it now. Yes. And Krimen, yes. Krimen. He was a man, he, was, he always thought of the matters. He, he used to, he was quite frequently consulted me on Rashtrapati Bhavan, he summoned me and asked me certain. But he would ask me and ask other advocates also, not just me. And then decide on his own what, what to do. Exactly what he done. He would never reveal what he wants to do. <laughs> whether he should impose president rules, whether he should not impose president's rule. This is the sort of thinking president that we must have. And we sometimes have, sometimes don't have. But, uh, but this, is, this is the importance. That of, distinguishes, of yes. An, yeah, but this yes. is the importance even of a non-performing executive head of state. He is very important. Very he is very important. Yes. Very important. Because he can bring wisdom yes. to bear. In the affairs of the yes. state. Without, without saying that I have to decide. He doesn't have to decide. The government has to decide. The prime minister has to decide. If anybody goes out, it's the prime minister who goes out. Never the president. <coughs> yeah. Rightly, now that you have just um, spoken good words. So, profound words in appreciation of President Narayanan, yes. Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Now, if you were to name the three most competent Chief Justices of India, oh, yeah. as you have practiced before oh, yeah. them, oh, yeah. what names come to your mind, sir? Well, I can certainly name uh, at least two first. Chief Justice Subarao. Subarao. Yes. yes. Uh, outstanding. Yeah. <coughs> of course, he had the pension for converting all his dissents <laughs> into, into majority judgment okay. when he became Chief Justice. Yes. But, but he, was, he had that intellect. Yes. He had that... He could do it with could wisdom. Could with yes, wisdom sir. And correctly do it. And I, I still remember when he could, he could take anything that came from advocates even. I remember in Golaknath where I was brief, very young, young to appear. Uh, Golaknath was a bench of 11 judges which sat. And Subarao presiding, and uh, the uh, what's his name? The, that uh, the, uh, the the minister who died in that air crash. Kumara Mangalam. Ah, Kumara Mangalam. Ah, yes, sorry, sir. Mohan Kumara Mangalam, brilliant advocate from Madras, brilliant. And he told the judge that if you do not give Parliament the power to say what it liked when it amended the constitution. There is going to be a revolt, a revolution in the country. So, so Subarao <laughs> took it in his stride. He just shook his head like that from side to side and said, now please proceed further. <laughs> he was one. The second was perhaps in his time, Justice Venkatachala. He was the last of the yes. Mohicans, if I may so, so yes. put it, because I, I am a little, yes. uh, a little preferential to uh, the old times, old because they all yes. occurred to me. Uh, because he had both the moral fiber yes. and the intellect to be appreciated not only by the bar, but yes. by his own colleagues. Yes. They'd all look up to him. Yes. You must have a chief justice who is looked up to. Yeah, by, by even by his colleagues, by because colleagues. then it becomes then he becomes an influence uh, bearer. He could earn their respect they as well. Yes, respect. And it is easy. because you see, he had that quality which many many judges have to cultivate. He, I still remember there was a party in person. No, there was a no sorry not a party. Right, there was a lawyer, a lawyer from South India or somebody <coughs> who. In one case, I, I was in present in court, that's all. I wasn't in that case. And he needlessly raised his voice, as some of us do, you see, when he got excited. At which Justice Venkachala, who also never did, suddenly got excited and responded sharply to that lawyer. Immediately he did that. He put his brief down and said, no, Mr. So-and-so, sorry, today is not the day to hear your case. We'll hear it two weeks later and adjourn it. That means your emotion, the heart, suddenly oh, yes. took over from the mind yes. and said, no, not today. 
we'll hear it at some other time when we, our, our mind is uh, properly focused. More Today, energy. because of your shouting and my shouting, the mind is not focused. You see, that makes a lot of difference. And that's why I say these are great judges. So two you have named, sir. Uh, two I have named. I, ca I can't name a third, quite frankly. Okay. I can't name a third at right. the moment in my time. Okay. But I, I was told. Yes. And I had great respect for him also because I knew him after he retired. Justice S.R. Das. S.R. Das, ah, yes, yes, sir. Who was Ashok Sen's father-in-law. Yes. Yes. He was a very charming old man. We, have, we had met him after he retired in Kalimpong, my wife okay. and I. Uh, he was uh, full of old times. and yes. uh, He must have been a great judge. Reading his judgments. And I, I do remember that he, he was a judge who came up from the High Court okay. and then the Supreme Court. And he was one judge whose judgments were never reversed from the High Court. Never. 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 That's something, something outstanding. Yes, outstanding. very uncommon. Never very uncommon. Uh, yes. I, and this I say only on hearsay because I never practiced before him at all. Justice. But I knew him after he retired. And he was a most, one of the most charming uh, Chief Justices I had met. Uh, thank you. Here we come to the end of uh, video number two. And uh, video number three, we'll have questions starting with judicial appointments. Thank you.